Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to show you how to code your tiny drummers. Whether you've got the single arm drummer or the double arm drummer, we're going to show you how to code both of them. So in this tutorial, we're going to be using bird blocks as our coding language. And bird blocks is the coding language that's associated with um, iPads, Kindles, tablets, or smartphones. We figure just about everybody has access to a smartphone. However, if you're using a laptop or a Chromebook, and you're using MakeCode as your programming language, we have the code that we're about to build in BirdBlocks. We have that same code for MakeCode that we've linked down below, so you can check that out. Also, I want to pause here and say that if you have not yet done the video tutorials teaching you how to code in Bird Blocks or Make Code, you should pause here and go watch those video tutorials. Um, go watch those video courses. We'll have that linked down below as well. Those will show you how to set up your iPad or your Kindle or your laptop or your Chromebook, how to connect to your Hummingbird, how to set everything up, and how to program lights and motors and sensors. If you haven't watched those, you might get a little bit lost in this next part. All right, so let's go ahead and program in bird blocks. I'm going to start by programming our single armed tiny drummer. And to do that, I'm going to drag out a position servo block. And I like to set it at 90 degrees first, just to see what 90 degrees looks like on my robot. Because I don't know where this arm, what position this arm is at. That could be zero, that could be 90. I just don't know. So I want to know where is 90 degrees. Well, 90 degrees seems pretty far down. Um, let me try to go a different way with it. 45 degrees? Oh, it, it moved up a little bit. Okay, so I have a, a feeling that zero degrees, ah yeah, zero is all the way up. So you'll want to note that. What angle is up on your robot? Make sure you write that down somewhere. For me, zero is up. Now I'm going to drag out another one and determine what down looks like. What is down? What hits the cup? Well, that doesn't go all the way to the cup. How about 80 degrees? That looks like it goes to the cup, 0, 80. There we go, so it's hitting the cup and it's making a sound. That's what I want to have happen. So now I'll snap these two together. I'll go get a repeat forever block from the gold control blocks. Then I'll try it. Oh, no, no, no. I have forgotten something. What did I forget in my code, do you know? What I forgot was weight blocks. So especially when you're using position servos, you really need to use weight blocks because otherwise it doesn't have enough time to get between the two positions. Let me show you again what that looked like. Uh, it's trying to do two things at once. It's not very good at doing two things at once. Are you very good at doing two things at once, I wonder? So we need some weight blocks, one in between, one afterwards. So now let's see what that looks like. There we go. We're programming. It's waiting one second in between each movement that it does. Eh, but that's a little slow. Let's speed it up. You can make it go faster by making the wait time smaller. Instead of waiting a second in between each movement, now it's waiting a half a second. Very cool. So now we've got our tiny drummer to drum. And I'll stop my code here. So uh, you could do a bunch of different things with your tiny drummer at this point. You could sync it up to your favorite song. Um, you can find the, the beats per minute of your favorite song online. You can just type uh, BPM into Google and your, the title of your favorite song. You can do some math to figure out exactly how long you need to wait between the up and the down position. You could have it play different rhythms. We could get into music here and go like quarter note, eighth note, right? Uh, sixteenth note, something like that. So you can get into all kinds of cool stuff with just a popsicle stick and a cup. But let's move on and let's talk about how to program your two-arm drummer. So let me switch these out. I'll bring my two-arm drummer back here. And now instead of connecting to the hummingbird that was um, associated with my single-arm drummer, I'm going to connect to this other one over here, which is this top one. And I'm going to get rid of the code that I had built before because that code no longer applies to my two-armed drummer here. All right, so same thing. I want to get my position servo one, set it at 90, and see what happens. Ah, so my position servo one is going to be this arm over here. And it looks like 90 degrees is up for this robot. Okay, so I wonder what down would be. Would 45 go down? Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, so it's this one over here. My bad. This motor over here. So it looks like 90, what's 90? 90's kind of up. What's 45? It's kind of down. Okay, it looks like it needs to go down a little further, though, to hit the cup. 
So let me say, let's go to 35. Yeah, that looks like it's pushing it there. So I'm going to uh, make a note that 90 degrees is up and 35 is down, up, down, up, down. Great. So now I'm going to uh, put this just like I did before in a repeat forever. I'm going to have it wait half a second in between. And now I will have just the same code that I built before, basically, but with the different angles associated with this robot. Now I've got it playing a snare drum. Very nice. But I also want it to play the symbol over here, or the hi-hat, it might be. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go over here and get another position servo block, but this one I've got to change it to port 2, because this one is in port 2 over plugged into the Hummingbird port 2. So what's 90 degrees for this one? All right, 90 degrees looks like it's down for this one. Let me see what 45 looks like. Yeah, and 45 is up. So this one's opposite. All right. So I'm going to put 45 as up, and I'm going to change it to port 2, and 90 as down. You know, it's not quite hitting the symbol all the way. I want it to go a little further down. Let's see, 45, a little further down. Oh, it would be a little bit more, 100. 45, 100. There we go. Now it's really hitting the symbol. Okay, so I'm going to build the same, same little code over here in a repeat forever loop with my weight blocks. But if we think about how, uh, let me put a green flag tapped on top here on both of them. So now when I hit the green flag, it will initiate both of these forever loops at the same time. So one event, the green flag, is going to start them both at the same time and my snare drum is going twice as fast as my hi-hat. But that's not quite how most drummers work. I think they usually do the, the hi-hat is twice as fast as the snare drum. I guess it depends what song you're playing, but that's what I want to do with mine. So I'm going to make this, instead of going one second, I want it to go half as long as the snare drum, so I'm going to have it go 0.25 seconds. There we go. And now... I've got a drummer who's really jamming out, looking, looking super fly. But there's another component that we haven't talked about yet on this drummer. It's also got a tri LED in the head. So let's program that tri LED as well. We can put that in its own forever loop over here. So I can put a tri LED in there. Now my drummer has a whole like purple thing going on. So I want my drummer to be purple. That would be red and blue. I want it to wait a second, well, half a second. I don't want to be slow, you know. I'm going to duplicate this. And I want it to go purple and then turquoise, because I like turquoise. So green and blue make turquoise. And I'm going to put another when green flag tapped. I just want to see what this looks like. There we go. That's kind of nice. We've got purple and sort of a turquoise blue. That's pretty. I like that. Okay. So now I'm going to stop that code. And now I can line these up so I can see them all a little bit better. Oop. Zoom in so I can see them all a little bit better. And now I can start them all at the same time when I hit that green flag. Look at this drummer. That is awesome. So you can program your drummer to do just about anything. You can go to our website um, and go to the, the learning materials, go to the program page once you've gone through the... Um, the um, online learning portal, you can go to the program page and add in some more components, add in some more lights, add in some more motors, um, add in a sensor if you'd like. Um, build this out with some other tips from our build page or turn this into a totally different project that you can find on the teach page. There's all kinds of things that you can do with this project, but I'm so glad that you built and coded your Tiny Drummer. In the last video, which is coming up next, I'm going to talk about what to do next now that you have built and coded your Tiny Drummer. But first of all, give yourselves a pat on the back. That was some great building and coding. All right, I'll see you in the next video.